Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a dashboard for your traveler's notebook. Um, I'm going to be using this paper. It is double sided so that way wherever you look it's, it's decorative. It is by Hello Again. Um, I'm going to be cutting this down. I'm going to show you how to make how I make one for a wide traveler's notebook. Um, so this one's going to be trimmed down to five inches. Typically a wide um, a wide traveler's notebook is approximately five and a quarter inches wide an insert is and eight and a quarter inches high. Um, I'm cutting off that last quarter inch on both of those measurements so that way there's um, allowance for the lamination and you won't have too much hanging over um, hopefully none hanging over when you have the finished product. So Here's this one just cut down to 8 inches. And next up is laminating. So I use the Purple Cow lamination machine. Um, I actually got it from Costco, I guess about four years ago now. And it was only like 20 or $30. It came with some lamination sheets and it's lasted um, this long. So I don't think that it's a bad product. I think it's a great product by all means. And you don't necessarily need a more expensive one. This, um, it's not important really where you set your sheets inside the lamination because we're gonna be cutting them afterwards. I I know a lot of people set up their dashboards where they put both the front and back cover into one lamination sheet. I don't like doing that because it is very, very stiff and the final product is very, very stiff and either it lays flat or it lays closed and then otherwise you have to kind of uh, push it to which way you want it to go. So here somebody might actually bend it but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be cutting this in half and attaching them together in another way. So I'm just going to cut these in half. And then afterwards, I actually like to put it through the laminator again. I put it through in the opposite direction that I put it through before. That way the roller that's inside the machine that keeps it moving actually just hits it at a different point and this is set on the 5 ml setting um, which I use for pretty much everything whether it's cardstock or regular paper I just use the 5 ml setting I think that it gets a little bit hotter and the where it laminates next to the paper tends to be a little bit closer the, the lamination sheets melt together a little bit better So right now I'm just trying to figure out which way I wanted it to be up. Um, if I want that one to be the front, I, I can't remember which one I wanted for the front. So now I'm going to trim this down. If this is your first time doing it, I would definitely recommend doing it with scissors. You need to make sure that you don't cut too close to the paper because there is kind of a little air gap. Um, that'll be there. If you cut into that air gap, then it will it will cut, um, it will separate the lamination sheets, will not stay together. So, which is not what you want. So you want to make sure that you cut only where the lamination has actually adhered front to back. So I'm just showing you the corners I have a crop -a dial and I'm doing the eighth inch corner rounder and really it's not um, anything that's actually rounding the corners it's just kind of making it not sharp so you can't really see it, it didn't want to focus um, and here I'm just doing it to this side really you only have to do the outside edges but I wasn't sure which one I was going to do for the outside so that way it's just not sharp. You could also do that with scissors or something like that. It's not a big deal if you don't have it. 
I have regular, just kind of packing tape, clear, shipping tape, whatever you want to call it. I used to use a name brand and then I found that I didn't need to. Um, this brand is actually an off brand and it's a little bit cheaper, a little bit thinner and it works, I think, even better. So now I'm trying to figure out which is front and back, um, which way I want it to be. Top, bottom, all that good stuff. Um, and the good thing about this is that it's not permanent. If at any point you don't like what you've done or you only want half of it or anything like that, you can just redo it. So I'm taking the clear pla packing tape and just putting it kind of down one side and leaving a tail, top, bottom, and the overhang there. So I flipped it over, sticky side up. I'm kind of lining it up. I'm eyeballing this, as you can see. You could measure it out but I'm kind of a wing it person. Um, and now I'm going to take a long piece of the tape and put it sticky side down on top of the other piece of tape. So no sticky part is hanging out. Now the inside, the inside there, that middle part, is a little bit bumpy, but you're not going to see it. It's going to be underneath your elastic. If you're a perfectionist, it might be something that you want to you know, make sure that you take more care with, but it's really something that you're never going to see. It's going to be on the inside, um, underneath all your inserts or one insert or your elastic. And you can make that tape as wide or as thin as you want it to be. So it can go around one insert, all your inserts. So here I'll show you, and then you just pop it in. So this is, I just put it around one just so you could see. Um, and it's nice and pretty. And actually this one would be reversible as well. So you could, if you got a little board of your flowers, you could put this something here, maybe write a little quote and just have that be a little more decorative. I also wanted to show you that the, t the tape idea you can use with anything. So this was a pocket, um, a zip pocket that was only one-sided. And I put that double, you know, the double tape on it with a transparency and then it fit in the elastic as well. So really there's lots of different things that you can do with just two pieces of tape. And so embrace the process. Little quote on there. Well thanks for watching.